This is the last video in the sequence and it's on human interaction. A lot of your end of course stuff has to deal with the impact that humans are having on their ecosystem environment. Although most of it's common sense, there are a few topics that you need to pay attention to as we go through this PowerPoint. This is the last one that you'll have to do before you got your Memorial Day break. So finish these notes and that'll be the last one with a short assignment at the end. What kind of impact have humans had on a changing landscape of the world? For an example, let's look at the Hawaiian Islands. Once a raw island chain made of volcanoes that didn't exist once upon a time, now has cleared land, structures, resorts, places for people to come and visit. Uh, they have to use large amounts of water for the irrigation of crops of coffee and pineapple. And they have the introduction of both native and non-native species that have impacted the islands. There's three main types of human activity in the biosphere. This is not a slide that has to be written down. This is more of a cover slide. We're going to talk about hunting and gathering and its effects on the biosphere. We're going to talk about agriculture, how that's changed over the years. And finally, industrial growth and urban development. So in other words, how have factories grown and how has that affected urban areas or areas around cities and their growth? How have humans had an impact on hunting and gathering? The first humans, like the ones that settled the West, that hunted buffalo almost to extinction. They've had a huge impact on hunting. The reason why today we have bag limits, we have hunting licenses that must be checked. Uh, same thing with fishing. You have fishing licenses and limits and sizes that we have to make sure that there's future generations able to enjoy the same harvesting that we do today. There's been a huge change in agriculture. I know most of you probably know more about this than I do. But if you just look at the pictures, the sample of how plowing has changed from back in the day to today, agriculture was so important because we have to provide food products for our people and exports. The advances in the green revolution, which means the use of fertilizers to produce more crops, along with the challenges of supplying the United States with enough food to be self-sufficient, which it does not. With the Industrial Revolution of the 1800s, it changed industry for the rest of the time. With factories coming up and assembly lines, we changed and, and people moved away from the suburbs, away from the farms to the cities where the factories were. These weren't just local problems anymore. It also increased our air pollution and water pollution, which we're still seeing the effects today. Industrial growth is huge. Just look at the suburb of Winterville outside of Greenville. One of the huge topics is renewable energy resources versus non-renewable. A renewable energy resource is one that can be used over and over again. Non-renewable energy resources are ones that we're eventually going to run out of. Non-renewable energy resources will be things like wood and fossil fuels, coal, oil, and gas that one day there will not be. So we're trying to figure out how to preserve them now to lengthen the usage of these materials. Soil and farmland can be a renewable energy resource if managed properly. One, we have to take care of soil erosion and not let it wash away by wind or blow away with water. We also must make sure we're not cutting down trees and to increase desertification or turning a productive area into a desert. We've already discussed deforestation with one of our EOC questions of the day, but that would be the cutting down of all trees. We have to manage our land resources to make sure they are usable for future generations. Fisheries are also a resource that we're trying to turn to be a renewable energy resource. Fish and water animals we're using as food. However, we must make sure that we are not overfishing or taking too much away. Sustainable development, while we have bag limits and size limits on certain fish and what you can and cannot harvest. And we've also tried to start aquaculture or fish farming, even done right around here in Scuffleton with McLawhorn Farms. They do tilapia. Air resources are something that we use on a daily basis every time you breathe. We have to make sure that we're limiting the amounts of air pollution. This is harmful material that's found in the air that can cause us breathing problems. We've seen a huge increase in the amount of respiratory illness based on the increased amount of air pollution, uh, along with smog and even acid rain. Acid rain is when air pollution mixes with water in the clouds and forms acid rain, falls down, and as you can see in the picture, deters trees. 
Biodiversity is one of the greatest things that this planet has. It means that all living things are different. The Earth's biodiversity is one of the greatest natural resources that we possess. We use different types of animals for food sources. Just think of all the proteins. Beef, chicken, turkey, fish, seafood, other sundry items that we use just for protein. Not to mention industrial products and then medicines that we also use. This slide is extremely important for your EOC ramifications. With wildlife, we have to watch pollution and a topic called biomagnification. Biomagnification means as you go up in trophic levels or energy levels in a food chain, the effects of a poison become even more than they were just in the regular basic level. So in other words, a producer has it bad, a primary consumer has it twice as bad, a secondary consumer, and so on and so on. Invasive species are a problem that we're having still in North Carolina. Invasive species are species that are not native, that have been brought here and are taking over. The Department of Transportation brought kudzu, a plant to help with soil erosion. Now as you travel down highways in North Carolina, especially eastern North Carolina, you can see kudzu growing wild over top of native species and plants. In essence, it's weeding them out and taking their habitats. So the next are going to be your assignment for today. You are going to create a billboard. If you'll let the next thing scroll, it should explain everything that you need to have done.